Let's not get in. Those are his clones. Let's go. Hello there. This is where the fun begins. What's going on guys? Unofficial Star Wars here. Hope you're doing well and in this video we are going to be discussing that big twist that we saw in the Mandalorian Season 3 finale into the regards of Moff Gideon. Yes, there are spoilers ahead for the Mandalorian Season 3 finale, so if you haven't already seen it, go watch it. It is pretty cool. So into the regards of that Season 3 finale twist was indeed that Moff Gideon does have clones. And for another thing is that those clones are actually supposedly, as he says in the finale, force sensitive. Now we've seen this both inside and outside in canon and in Legends of Star Wars is that it's very incredibly difficult to clone, especially with force sensitivity. And so even to a point of that it being so difficult to just almost being impossible, and we've only seen it like two times in both Legends and in canon. In canon we see it in the sequel trilogy with Palpatine and bringing him back, and yes we do know that the Mandalverse is leading up to those events, so they need to have those kind of key developments and plots within their narrative. Of course, to help better set up and explain things for what we do see in the sequel trilogy with Palpatine and Force cloning and everything like that. And the other time we see it in Legends would be for the Force Unleashed games with Starkiller. Now just overall discussing a plot twist of that what happens in the Mandalorian Season 3 finale turned out to be a major disappointment to an extent for many fans out there due to its importance throughout the entirety of the series of what the Mandalorian has been building towards as I had mentioned there of what we're going to be seeing in the sequel trilogy. And so while we may be disappointed with what they did with that uh, overall cloning process of just introducing these four sets of clones and then just destroying them just like that, I think that we will for sure see the return of them and that if for anything this is just a small little tidbit of what these clones or four sets of clones are going to be playing in the future. Of course, Star Wars is known for having some of its biggest plot twists of all times, such as Darth Vader being the father of Luke Skywalker, Luke and Leia being siblings, and even the reveal of baby Yoda in The Mandalorian Season 1. So essentially what I'm saying is that yes, while having four sensitive clones is quite a twist, I think an even bigger twist is that they're going to bring them back in Season 4 or Season 5. Somewhere down the road, we will see the return of these Moff Gideon four sensitive clones, an army at that, and play a more significant role and threat at that. And so for the most part, these out-of-left-field developments in a galaxy far, far away deeply resonate with fans and make the overall story that much more compelling. However, there are some instances where a major plot twist only brings disappointment, and I feel like that fans are disappointed of what we had with this overall twist in the Season 3 finale of The Mandalorian. In The Mandalorian Season 3 finale, we see the reasoning behind Moff Gideon's obsession with cloning as it has finally been revealed. We have been knowing ever since really the introduction of Moff Gideon is that he wants something to do with cloning, but what is that something? Well, of course, people have always thought it has to do with Palpatine and cloning Palpatine, bringing Palpatine back that we see in the sequel trilogy later on. And so to a point, that is kind of what it is, except he more wants this cloning uh, process for himself, really, we see revealed in Season 3, is that he's power hungry, essentially. He wants to be the, the ruler of the galaxy, taking place of where kind of Thrawn is for right now, being in charge of this Imperial Remnant, but for another thing, to really take over the galaxy, like Emperor Palpatine once did. And so after R5 had opened the barriers, leading to Gideon's command center on Mandalore, Din Djarin and Grogu enter a room filled with multiple pods that contain clones of Gideon himself. Grogu, of course, who was noticeably curious about what he was seeing, even walked up to one of the pods, which resulted in a close-up shot of one of the Gideon clones opening its eyes and awakening. However, what makes the scene disappointing is that the scene ends quickly as it began when Din Djarin destroys all of the pods at once, pressing a couple of buttons on a computer, and just like that, they're all gone, bursting all of the pods, seemingly putting an end to all of the Gideon clones as well. And so when Din Djarin and Gideon do come come face to face just seconds later, a plot twist revealed by Gideon that he was constructing clones of himself and making them force sensitive so that he was to be more powerful than he ever was, something that he did reveal in the previous episode 
saying that he wants to bring back an out of all of the different best attributes essentially of all of these different societies so for the empire maybe it was the way that the empire constructed off of a emperor and ruled the entirety of the galaxy for the mandalorians their use of beskar for their jedi their force sensitivity and so much more with all of these different other societies that we do see within star wars is that he wants to bring those best possible qualities and put them all into one thing making a grand army of himself and so as we also see the reveal of this is why grogu was wanted by gideon is for his force sensitivity and his midichlorians is so that he was able to take those midichlorians and put them into these force sensitive clones and so as i had kind of touched on at the beginning of this video is what i really found disappointing about this is just how quickly it comes and goes essentially and also with the explanation part of that gideon literally explains all of this in like a sentence or two and then they move on to fighting don't get me wrong the fighting was cool action-packed loved it but i want to see more with this and see them expand more on this and i think that's something for certain that we will see in the future of season four season five maybe even other mandalorian shows like the ahsoka show a book of boba fett season two skeleton crew because it does feel like that there is more to this and that this is only just barely scratching the surface at that i mean quite honestly imagine if these clones did go through and this grand scheme and plan that gideon did have went through and these uh, like four sensitive clones got unleashed and are taking over the galaxy posing a big threat maybe even at that bigger than what the empire once was you'd have characters like luke skywalker having to come back imagine ezra bridger coming back with the ghost crew and everything like that to take down such an evil threat and i think that is something that we could see to a point and so as we know the very first episode of the mandalorian in season one had featured Din Djarin retrieving grogu as a bounty for the empire more specifically Din Djarin had been retrieving grogu for dr pershing who was ordered to retrieve grogu's dna at the time fans didn't know what it could be for but it was known that pershing was a cloning expert and scientist leading many fans to believe that gideon was all a part of the emperor's contingency plan to eventually return as a clone as we later see in the sequel trilogy with the rise of skywalker and so it was even theorized at one point that gideon could have been the one to eventually create snoke that would have obviously directly tied the mandalorian into the sequel trilogy and also explained how palpatine ultimately did return which is something else we see in the rise of skywalker that kind of failed to explain at that and so to a point we're seeing what i call the quote-unquote dave filoni effect of where we saw dave filoni make the clone wars the animated show and that animated show made the prequels 10 times better let alone as a fan that grew up with the prequels the prequels are already pretty dang good in my own thoughts but really what the clone wars animated show did for the prequel movies is that it just made them better it made us connect better to those characters and explain things in different plot threads a, a lot better at that as well and that's essentially what we're seeing with this quote-unquote they filoni effect is that he's creating a different universe another show uh, essentially around uh, the sequel trilogy to build up towards those events and help better set up for it i'm definitely hopeful and i think that there's a lot more that we're going to be seeing with these four sensitive clones that Gideon has constructed. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. What do you guys think about these four sensitive clones of Gideon? Are we going to see more of them in the future of maybe season four of The Mandalorian returning as quite a bigger threat? Let me know what you guys all think in the comments down below. I have plenty of other different theories into the regards of The Mandalorian season three finale that we are going to be discussing here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and join us here today. We are talking and covering all types of Star Wars related news, leaks, rumors, theories, and breakdowns here on the channel. So if you guys are into any of that, hit the subscribe button and join us here today. And so until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching today's video. This has been Unofficial Star Wars. May the Force be with you as always. Peace out.